Hello, I'm Dave Perry and I've lived on this beautiful Emerald Isle of Ireland for nearly 20 years now. And I've always been fascinated by these. Ireland's motorway sculptures are part of our everyday lives. In fact, there are approximately 1,500 of them gracing the roadside embankments. Whether it be on short commutes or a vacation on the west coast, it's nearly impossible not to pass one. Yet few of us know the stories behind them, what they signify, who the artist is, and even why they're there at all. Well, I'm on a journey to find out a little bit more. I've come to meet local historian Matt Reed, who's going to educate me about one such sculpture, nice which has intrigued me for a while. I've had you're the man to tell me a thing or two about this. First of all, who was Gordon Bennett? Well, Gordon Bennett was an American newspaper man. He inherited the New York Times when his father died and he was well known for his flamboyant and outraged behaviour in New York society. Um, one of his party pieces was he'd go into a restaurant, he would grab the tablecloth and pull it out from under everybody. Of course, he'd make a mess of the place, but he'd hand the head waiter a hundred dollars here, that'll pay for the damage. But how come this beautiful sculpture is here? Why here? Gordon Bennett sponsored the Gordon Bennett Trophy for international road racing at the turn of the 20th century and the leading countries at the time in motor manufacture would have been Germany, France, Britain and the US. And the rules of the race was that the winning country had to host the race the next year. Now in 1902, England unexpectedly won the race. They didn't expect to win the race, but they won the race and they had to race in Great Britain. Now the problem was on mainland Britain, the speed limit was 12 miles per hour. <laughs> so not conducive to international road racing, and road racing was banned anyway. And what was the speed limit over here in this country? Well, there was, there was no speed limit, because there was only about 300 cars in the country. Oh, so nobody, wow. was, nobody was speeding around the place. Uh, so come to Ireland and you can go as fast as you want? Basically. And the other story that comes out of it is the origin of British racing green. Okay. Now, the international colours at the time, every country would adopt a colour. Red, white and blue, Germany. France and uh, uh, America. So the three national colours, red, white and blue of England were taken up. But it just so happened that the Napier cars were painted olive green. So some brainwave decided, we'll tell the Irish we're painting the cars green to thank them for allowing us to race here. E even now, here in 2021, the British racing team is going back to British racing green as their primary colour on the cars. Are you telling me British Racing Green was born here? British Racing Green, as the racing colour of the British teams, right up until the 1970s, was born here in South County Kildare. And I notice out the corner of my eye, Matt, that you're sporting a little bit of British Racing Green yourself. Well, Racing Green as an iconic colour will be seen as lending a sense of class and elegance to a gentleman. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> And one of his main gaffes, or his most famous gaffe, is going to visit his fiancée and her parents at a New Year's Eve party with the highest of New York society. And feeling the need to relieve himself, he peed in the piano. A colourful chap then. Now, I mean, what a way to make friends and influence people. And that gives us the expletive, Gordon Bennett. So that's where it came from. That's where it came All from. All these years I grew up in England, listening to my grandfather especially, shouting Gordon Bennett any time anything went wrong. That's, that's I'll never be able to drive past this sculpture again without thinking of a man urinating into a piano. <laughs> <laughs> the legacy that's left is that this is the birthplace of Formula One racing. This was the first enclosed circuit race actually where we're stood now where we are on these roads here incredible what strikes me as kind of sad though matt is that the amount of people who drive past here every day without knowing this story or the roots behind it they probably know of this their parents may have told them but the average person going by here in kildare they wouldn't know and the route is signposted and it's a amazing historical legacy the birthplace of formula one racing right here on the back of that, there's only one thing to say. Gordon, Gordon Bennett! Bennett. <laughs> that is only one of many fascinating stories hidden behind these magnificent roadside sculptures, which we drive past every day without making any remark because we just don't know anything about them. 
Well, in this programme, I aim to address that through meeting some of the sculptors and the storytellers behind them. And, of course, enjoying some stunning Irish scenery and some good old crack along the way. I'm Dave Perry, and thanks for watching.